Hey everyone, welcome to Snowbreak Containment Zone and we are here to check out or review Katja Dawning. So she dropped today and um, my first thoughts were yesterday where she has go she is going to be similar to Cherno in terms of in terms of how she's going to be played, but she is totally different guys and I'll tell you why. So first off, let's look for Katja here. Um, okay, I just want to showcase the new skin that I got for this whole video. Um, I like this better than the default one. So um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm happy with this one. So without, without any delay, let us um, see how she goes. Let's discuss her skills first and let's try her out later and how to... Um, do her skill rotations basically okay so she is not like Scherner her gameplay is a bit different she uh, has synergy with her gun and with her um, standard skill we will start off with her skills so basically her skills this is going to be her bread and butter guys it's going to be shimmering trail this is her standard skill so cool down seven seconds with the uh, s energy cost of seven as well so take note that when you open her neural skills there are other uh, additions here especially when you equip a frost weapon decrease the number of crystal veins that disappear after triggering aurora ray in by half we'll talk about that in a while it's a bit confusing actually her standard skill so after crystal vein defeats a target and disappears katya creates another crystal vein and gains 40 aurora charge okay so in a nutshell i won't go through all of this katya basically when once she does a standard skill she creates a crystal vein okay if there are crystal veins near the target it deals frost damage to up to five targets so upon dashing creates a vein if there's a target there it it basically explodes, it disappears, and deals frost damage to nearby enemies. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't stay long. Okay, but during a dash, using her standard skill again will trigger a glider effect. This one is part of her skill rotation. We'll do that in a while. So as you do her standard skill and you spam it, it creates a glider effect. So it creates a one additional crystal vein without consuming standard skill charge but this crystal vein does not damage two nearby targets so this effect can only be triggered once so up to 12 crystal veins can exist in the field this is crucial because her skill should be building up to 12. um we'll i'll show you all of the build up later and how to do it so when katcha is deployed there are crystal veins on the field and once it is full like for example has a hundred aurora charge okay it uh, it uh, shoots and half of your crystal veins will be out so if you have 12 i think six will be remaining on the field so basically um you gain aurora charge um every one second so even if you don't do anything and as you shoot a target you also gain aurora charge okay so when there are no crystal veins in the field Katja loses all aurora charge take note of, of that can okay, i get going back to the 100 aurora charge so there's a meter in the middle that when it goes out basically um that is when the crystal veins will disappear and they will deal frost damage to and up to six uh, crystals will disappear okay so this is basically the damage that is dealt by her standard skill for every crystal vein that fires an aurora ray replenishes four bullets so it's a cycle between her standard skill and her um her gun basically her ballistic damage so crystal vein is an auxiliary unit and not affected by auxiliary unit bonuses so passive shot hit decreases standard skill cooldown by 0.5 seconds and restores one 
S energy. So take note that this skill is multiplied by her attack. Again, this is very confusing. The concept here is to create crystal veins, then shoot, shoot as in shoot as much as much as you can, then trigger an effect for Aurora charge as soon as your standard skill is full again, then you create another wave of crystal veins up until you can reach 12 because that is the cycle of her skill we'll do a demo guys i know it's a bit confusing but please bear with me for now because i had had to you know had to experiment with, with, with this before this video so again her support skill is going to be sweeping hell shot this is a good addition because this one has frost basically um ice arrows so frost damage and uh, inflicts frozen for, 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 for four seconds. This is actually decent um, as a crowd control mechanism. And her ultimate is going to be Sky Shattering Gale. So the cooldown is 30, you energy cost is, the, is 50. This one has decent damage, nothing really special about this. Um, but if you have crystal veins on the field, it, you know, it, it uh, contributes more to the damage so if you see the new neural skills here so when equipped with the frost weapon replenishes standard skill charge after firing sky lush arrow so again we will be focusing with the standard skill because again this is her bread and butter which coincides with her gun or her shooting or her ballistic damage okay this is her day was alignment so when equipped with a frost weapon increase katia's Attack by 6% for each crystal vein on the field. Again, the more crystal veins you have, the higher the pers the, the higher the, the, the stack would be. So up to six stacks for each 100% alignment index, ratio increases by 1%. So if you have 400, so that's a plus 4%. So this basically goes to 10 and this is for each crystal vein on the field up to six stacks so sorry it's not 12 max it's going to be six so that's going to be six uh 10 percent times six so that's 60 percent if you have 400 alignment index so enough with the skills let's go over her weapon here so just want to go short on the weapon i'm not gonna really rattle you guys with some stats but this is her four-star weapon, Tornado. Um, if you do, um, if you do get this one, and um, the basic right now, basic damage is at forty-eight percent. If you train this, if you modify this, the damage goes to from tier one, which is forty-eight, it goes to fifty-six. Okay, that's a big increase. That's very decent enough for this weapon alone if you don't want to go for the uh, five-star weapon. So, but guys, if you take a look at this weapon, this is only a plus 46% on standard skill damage. So only one stat, no other pluses, no other bonuses. This is only one bonus of base of 46. Although it increases by, I think by, uh, uh, presumably, 8% per level, but again, it's only one addition, or it's, it's only one buff. But if you go with her other weapon, which is Aurora Sands, let us uh, check the stat out here. Aurora Sands, by the way, has a couple of additions. So, um, you have increase in frost damage, of 18%. This is the base number, guys. You have also plus 24 in standard skill damage, plus a 30% once you're up to max stats. So that's a total of 54% uh, standard skill damage. If you take a look, I can't really look how it scales up, but definitely at tier 2, these are going to scale up. Again, if you follow the pattern of um, the, the weapons here between five, four star and five star, five star is going to be good between 30 
uh, no, 20 to 30 percent extra damage based uh, versus your four star. So five star is gonna be gonna be better, of course. But again, if you don't have any uh, what do you call this? If you don't have any options, if you only have the four star option, I don't think it's gonna be bad. She's not going to deal a lot of ballistic damage, but again the bonuses for each of the guns is going to be be very good especially if you have the five star but again the four star is decent enough that if you have time you can actually uh save up for the five star which is what i'm going to be doing okay um if you're asking about weapon again it's all about you if you have the means to get the five star get it but if you don't four star is not that bad actually i prefer the look of the four star because um it looks more natural as a gun so with that um tornado is what i'm going to be leveling up for now so on with logistics logistics is actually very very basic um you actually have to get alignment index and attack stat as your top two stats you can't go with um s energy bonus recovery or percentage because um there's a mechanic already in the skill that uh, makes makes your s energy go up or regenerates as you shoot bullets or as you hit a target so for this one for a vector so increased skill damage by 24 and this one is just a buff for each each hit with crystal uh, veins gives gotcha a stack of Increase attack by 5% for 10 seconds up to 4 stacks. So this is a maximum of 20%. Plus, uh, there's also increased damage of 65% by the Crystal Vein. So these are buffs, technically. Um, I think you should consider after your logistics is going to be manifestations. Because from what I see with Katya, she will place herself in around tier 0. Um, she can probably go, no, no, not tier 0, tier 0 0.5. She can probably go a step higher because of these three manifestations. These are going to take her up to a different level. So number one is your M1, which is Wings of Phoenix. So equip a frost weapon. The damage dealt by Crystal Veins ignores 25% of the target's damage. That's actually a debuff. That, that, that's an ignore... That's true damage, basically, not, not a debuff. That's true damage directed at a target. So that's number one. M2 is going to be when Crystal Veins fires an Aurora Ray, fires an additional Aurora Ray. This is an additional damage equal to 50% of the original. So this does not replenish bullets, but it is additional damage. And the last one, which I think is very important, that you should have is the damage by Crystal Veins ignores 12% of the target's all type resistance when Katya is switched into the field, she immediately performs one standard skill that doesn't consume any uses. So again, <coughs> there are a lot of ignore, ignore defense, ignore um, target's all type resistance. This could catapult her up the rankings or the tier. So for now, either I put her at 0.5 the lowest would be at um, tier one, basically, for now. And let's see how she does um, in terms of damage. She has a little, she has a bit more burst damage, basically. We're not going to use the supports here just for healing, just in case. But more or less, her damage will come in burst as, as long as you do do what is required of you to do like for example setting up your standard scale then shooting then as you are full again in your s energy you put out all of it and up to 10 already so shoot again up until you gain that s energy back then go with all of the standard skill again There, 
there is a jump in the damage. So basically all you have to do is, th that is the Aurora Charge. So um, set out the feathers, then shoot. Then as you shoot, um, when you go to 100, then the Aurora Charge goes out. Then you charge again, you put in the feathers and you repeat the process basically. That's it guys. Those are really my thoughts. It's re she's really dependent on manifestations. She, you have to get her up to manifestation 3 at least. If you go with manifestation 4 and 5, um, this is more on the final skill damage for each crystal vein in the field. Up to 6 stacks. So this is going to be 6 times 2. That's roughly 12%. But again, if you want to scale her up to a minimum, it's going to be at M3. So it's a bit of an investment for her. Um, by the way, as well, I don't have her five star gun. So if you do get her five star gun, I'm sure the damage that you see earlier would be better than what it is now. And now it is only a tier one. Obviously, damage again is not that big. So with that said, She's, she has a lot of potential. She's fun to play with. Um, you just have to make sure that she's built well. And again, she has a lot of investments, if I may say. You have to invest a lot in her for you to have really that max damage that you need. Again, guys, that is it. Comment down in the comment section if you're going to be pulling for Katya or if you already pulled for her. So. Thank you very much, guys, for staying this far. Take care, stay safe. This is the Warden, and I'm out of here.